May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was a darkness unlike any I had ever experienced. Not like the darkness when as a young boy I and my father Amitai would go out to look into the night sky because then you had the moon and you had the stars. Even on cloudy nights you still had the light of the fire. No, I was in a darkness unlike any I had experienced. And it was a darkness of my own making. Sometimes people refer to me as the reluctant prophet Jonah. No, I wasn't just reluctant. I was rebellious. The Lord God had called me to be a prophet, and he gave me a task to go to the city of Nineveh in order to proclaim that they would be destroyed unless they would repent. And if they would repent, then they would be delivered. I did not want them to be delivered. I wanted them to be destroyed because Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. And the Assyrian Empire was a threat to the nation of Israel. I wanted no good for them. I wanted them to be destroyed just as God had destroyed the Egyptian army in the waters of the Red Sea when he delivered my people from slavery during the time of Moses. I wanted them dead. And so rather than heading east to the farthermost point I headed west. I went to the seaport city of Joppa, booked passage on a ship, and we were headed across the Mediterranean Sea to Tarshish, modern-day Spain. I was running away from God. I was rebelling against God. And as a result, I found myself in darkness. Maybe you've had that experience too. Where you have rebelled against your God. Where he has told you to go one way and you go the opposite direction. And maybe you don't find yourself in the same kind of darkness I was in, but still, those can be dark times in our lives when we rebel against God and run away from Him. It is a darkness of our own making. Well, as we set forth across the Mediterranean Sea, a great storm broke out, threatening to destroy the ship. The men aboard began throwing their cargo over to lighten the load of the ship. But still, the storm and the winds beat upon that boat. I was sleeping. Just as Jesus would be sleeping in the boat as his disciples were battling a storm, so I was sleeping below decks. Finally, the captain came and roused me and said, what have you done? You see, all of the other men had been offering prayers to their gods. He wanted me to offer a prayer to my God that we might be delivered. 
But I knew what I had done. And I knew that these people were at risk because of my rebellion. I told them, you need to throw me overboard that you might be saved. I must die that you might live. They were reluctant to do that. They continued fighting against the storm, but it, it proved to be of no avail. And finally, with, with a prayer for forgiveness on their lips, they tossed me overboard. And I sank into the depths of the sea, into a darkness unlike any I had experienced before. And as I was sinking deeper down into those dark waters, I prayed for deliverance. I pray that the, the mighty hand of God would take me and put me on the shore. But that wasn't the deliverance that I received. I went from one type of darkness to another. As God caused a great fish that he had created for this purpose caused a great fish to come and swallow me. And I found myself in the damp, dank darkness of that fish's belly. I don't know how long I was in there. It seemed like days. And finally I did what we all too often do. After we have tried our own answers and our own solutions, I finally prayed. I, I, I gave a prayer of thanks and praise to this God who had delivered me from my own sinfulness had delivered me from death beneath the waves, had delivered me into the great fish. I thanked God. I didn't know what would happen next. But the great fish vomited, vomited me out of its belly onto the shore. Or once again I heard the word of the Lord say, go to Nineveh. This time I went. Jesus one time was asked what sort of sign he could give to justify the works he was doing. And Jesus, because he knew he was speaking to people who would not listen to him, said, the only sign I will give you is the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and nights, so the Son of Man will be in the depths of the earth and rise again. My experience in the great fish was a foreshadow of our Lord's time in the tomb. He experienced that darkness and the darkness of death, not because of rebellion, but because of obedience. He knew what would happen to him if he obeyed his Father's will. And he did so without hesitation. He, like me, was sacrificed so that others could live. My life was put at risk 
by being thrown into the waters of the Mediterranean Sea so that those sailors could live. Jesus' life was taken from him, actually was given by him to save all people. And he lay in the darkness of the tomb, having sacrificed himself as the one who would take away the sin of the world. After three days and nights, I was put back out onto the shore. I received a type of resurrection because I thought my life was over. But the Lord God delivered me. Jesus came forth from the tomb. having given his life as the Savior of the world, he came forth alive as the risen Lord, the one who would never die again. After I received my resurrection, I went to the city of Nineveh and I proclaimed God's word to them that if they didn't repent in 40 days, they would be destroyed. They repented. They were delivered. Delivered from God's wrath. Jesus, after his resurrection, taught his disciples until he ascended into heaven so that they could continue to proclaim his word and so that through the generations over the past 2,000 years, people could hear the word of God and the promise that if they repent, they will be delivered. The Easter gospel has rung forth through the centuries, summed up in these words, He is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.